So in this main series, we're going to be focusing on building up our weapon assets for our character. Uh, we're not going to be focusing much on our character at this point in this series because we only want to work on weapons, getting our skeletal meshes set up for our weapons, allowing our weapons to at least possibly be interchangeable, and also having our weapon bones and sockets talk to a blueprint and make our blueprint way more flexible for weapons to be changed out and uh, used amongst as few as skeletons as possible. That's my goal for this, so um, let's go ahead and get started. Now, one of the things I want to do is I probably wanted to set up our weapons so we can get rid of this prototype weapon pack. Now, this weapon pack is pretty awesome. Again, it's not too expensive. It's a great way to get started. Uh, it comes with materials, effects, and animations for the guns. Um, so we're going to be pretty much building our own same way that they kind of did theirs. Uh, so our plan of approach is going to be within this graph I've set up here or this diagram. So what it is is when I first started making my weapons I wanted to make sure that my weapons could actually be used amongst one skeleton so that that way that skeleton is able to share all animations amongst itself but not only that but I can take different parts of the weapon change them out if I want to or if I have like say a really unique weapon I can just skin it directly to this skeleton with no problem. Uh, at the bottom left here you actually see this is the hierarchy that I'm going to want to have to set up for my skeleton. Uh, so I have my root, my grip, which is going to have the trigger onto it. It's going to have a left and right hand IK. So that way, if I have a socket component that my hand is going to attach to or within my character blueprint, I want to say, oh, this is where the front IK is for the forward hand grip of the weapon, then I can actually have my character's hand snap to that position, whether his, snap, whether his hand's going to be holding an under hand, forward grip, or side grip, or something crazy. Um, now the other thing is we have the stock and we have stock extension so we have our stock piece will mount onto a, another socket attachment. Um, long story short a lot of this what this is is I have a root component for my weapon which will be over here and then we have our receiver or housing bone that everything else branches off from. So this center point here is going to be everything where we have our body of our weapon that has the trigger weld if you want to do it this way and everything else just attaches through sockets. Uh, so from there, what we'll do is I'm going to also need to open up a new Maya scene, and I have a base weapon that I want to bring in that I can use that I modeled out. So if I import this new little uh, Interstellar base rifle I was using for a project of mine, and I import this, I've already got it facing down the Ford X. Uh, one other thing too is you'll notice that this skeleton has already been constructed because I have gone through this system and actually tried it out and it works pretty well so I'm going to be sharing this on the downloadable section on my resources and my webpage for you guys. So uh, if you look at this weapon skeleton right now, if I were to select one of these bones you'll notice that yes the skinning is very bad on it right now because I wasn't focused on doing on animating this weapon just yet, I was more focused on getting the system working. And as you can see my root bone is in the zero zero space of the world and everything else branches off from our housing component or our housing bone and moves there. If I bring up my hypergraph you'll notice that our skeleton is set up pretty much the same exact way as the rest that we had on that diagram before. Um, but one thing to note is that this weapon is facing down the positive Y, or the forward y, forward X direction, excuse me. Um, reason I bring that up is because if we look at our characters in Unreal, or even the weapons for that matter, these weapons are facing down the forward Y. Just like our character is in our editor, our characters are down, are done in the forward Y and C up. Now, if how would I get my weapon if I've already constructed the bones within Maya to be facing that direction? Uh, well, for one, it's always good to start off with building your bones and the and the positive Y to start with. Um, so one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a character from my animation rigging toolkit that I have saved out. And what this is going to do is it's going to make my life a little bit easier. Is It's going to take my camera and it's going to flip it so that way everything is kind of facing down the forward Y for me and our weapon is down the forward X and I'm gonna have it's gonna be kind of funky at times if I ever switch this up. If I have a hard time navigating again I'm just gonna hold down alt and home and snap it so it recenters it resets my camera and I'm gonna move this character out of the way. 
this character is here is primarily as a reference, so that way I know which is the forward direction. Um, so I've already constructed this weapon on the forward X. Let's flip this weapon so it's down the forward Y. Uh, I'm going to select the weapon mesh, and I'm going to delete the history on it, and I need to unlock it so I can rotate it. So I'm going to select all those, click and drag, select all the channels, unlock the selected, and now I should be able to rotate it. Good thing is the pivot points in the center of the world. That was not a good rotation. Let's rotate it down negative 90. I'm going to freeze the transform so that negative 90 goes away. And now this weapon mesh is actually in, is zeroed out. Everything else is clean. Same thing with skeleton. I'm going to rotate that about negative 90. And everything is kind of centered up. So let's take our weapon mesh. Oh, real quick before I do that, the reason why I unbound that weapon skeleton, that weapon skin. Um, weapons are pretty easy to rig when it comes to, not rig, but uh, bind the skeletons because everything is mechanical most of the time, so everything's going to be a one-to-one. -one. Um, but if you set your scene up correctly the, in the beginning, you should be fine with this. Now, if I were to take that skeleton out and just export it right away with facing down the forward X, it's going to face down the forward X. Everything's going to be sideways, and that's not what I want. I want to take this weapon, and now if I rebind it, I'm going to make that smaller so I can select that skeleton. <clears throat> Skin, smooth bind. This weapon is now bound to this we to the uh, weapon bone skeleton, the weapon skeleton that we have. And I'm going to take this the uh, weapon out and I'm going to export it out so I can select the skeleton and mesh. File, export our selection. And I had done this earlier, so I have base rifle and I'm just going to give it a company name. Well, you know, like Smith and West, and you got. All those other guys too, so I'm just gonna call it my own little thing. Enter SCL. I'm a sci fi little geek, so I like that kind of stuff. So I'll just call it Interstell Base Rifle. And our smithing groups will be kept. And we don't have any animation on our weapons, such as like the bolt isn't moving or anything like that. So we can leave our bake animation checked off. Export out that animation. And we'll get a couple of warnings there. We should be fine. Now, if we jump back over to Unreal, in our weapons folder, I, for now, I'm just going to drag it right into here. Uh, I'm going to be doing another video on the character side of things where all this is going to be completely organized into a better folder hierarchy that I've already written out, and I'll go through and explain. So let's import our new weapon that we made. So I save it out on my desktop, and there's my Interstellar base rifle. And I'll hit open. So in our options here, since we're dealing with a brand new skeleton for this weapon, we we are going to leave this to none. So that way it's going to create a skeleton for us. We're going to import our mesh. We're going to import the skeleton asset. And we're going to leave these transforms alone. Um, I'm not bringing in the materials nor the textures. I have already made those, but I'm actually going to construct the material within here. So I actually have a flexible base master material for the weapons. And that way, all I have to do in the weapons is just flip out the uh, instances I make out for that uh, main material. So from there, if I do an import, give it a second, it'll import our weapon asset. It'll give us our skeletal mesh. It'll give us our skeleton, and it'll also give us our physics asset. So our physics asset, yes, it's very bad right now. This will actually come into play later on. So if I were to simulate by hitting enter, our weapon is going to you know, flop all over the place. very strange, like it's rubber. Um, but we're going to do that when we reskin our weapon up and we fix this. This will be better for when you do pickups. It'll be useful. So let's delve into our new weapon and make sure that it's actually facing the correct axis. And as we've exported it out, and since we flipped it around, when we rebound the scale, the mesh of the skeleton, it is facing down the positive Y. If you notice, there's actually a quite a few materials for this thing because when I designed this weapon, it was actually meant to be interchangeable so all these materials will influence different parts of the weapon so we can actually have something that's green or blue or we can instance all of our materials within our own little blueprint setup if we so choose for customization down the road. I mean it's very flexible whatever you want to do in your blueprint it's up to you. Uh, so let's replace our primary weapon blueprint that this guy holds because if we check again in our characters blueprint in our event graph when event begin play happens it's going to go through and do a give default weapon. It's going to find what weapons are available for this character to use. 
our primary one's going to get assigned, it's going to spawn it, and it's going to attach it to his hand, which we have all these functions written out that happen elsewhere. And our main weapon that we use right now is a primary weapon that attaches to his hand. So our primary weapon blueprint, let's open this up, take a look at the viewport. And right now we have a very, very basic weapon that's going on here. So we have our weapon mesh inherited, and I want to replace this with our new weapon we have right now. So if we look up Interstell, whoops, can't even spell the company I made up. So here's our weapon. If you notice, our weapon popped to a different location because its root location is different than that of the one we had in there, or its secondary bow, and that's actually the, the housing receiver side of it. So I'll compile, I'll save it, and let's take a look at our character's animation when he's in a idle position, for instance. So he, the preview mesh right now is that pro, is that prototype weapon. Let's go to animation and let's bring up uh, this aim space one here. This is pretty good. So he's aiming down the sights, and I'm back in the skeleton tab here so I can better edit what's going on with his sockets. Let's remove this prototype assault rifle, and let's add another preview asset, and let's bring in our interstell base rifle that we made. And we can see that it's kind of snapped down below. It's working just fine, it's just the socket needs to be changed, because remember, this our weapon root is attaching to the socket. If you wanted to, you can definitely, you know, export out, if you have the prototype weapon pack, export it out, match up those bones, and then just reskin the weapon to it, and then re-export it out, and it should be moved. Um, for this, I'm being very lazy, and I'm just going to move it, because in what I'm going to do in the future is all my weapons I'm going to make are going to be pretty much copying the same place. Now, what I mean, what I mean by that is, when I make weapons, I'm going to make sure for one that I'm using the same skeleton here. I'm going to model out the hand grip locations to almost the same one for one spot. And then everything else is just going to be based around this one spot. If everything else looks the same within this same location, then all the weapons when you bring them in will keep snapping to the same places. The animation should look pretty well, pr pretty good to start with so you're not dealing with tons of headaches on different hand grip positions. Um, again, you can always make it so that the bone positions in different locations, as long as that root remains the same, that's all that really matters. Um, but we'll see what kind of crazy weapons we can make up down the road. So right now, let's just focus on getting this set up. So he's holding this as an undergrip weapon. This actual barrel is made for a foregrip kind of position. That's what that part is right there in front of that magazine. But I'm going to save that out. And if we preview our guy, I'm going to make sure I'm only down to one player right now and play an editor. He has a weapon in his hand. And if we're aiming it, it's looking, it looks all right right now. I mean, it's going to need some adjust, adjustments and fixing, and so does the character. But we now have our own little weapon inside of the editor at this point. So, all right. So from that, we actually have our own first custom weapon working in our engine for ourselves so from there uh, we're gonna go through and I need to get this cleaned up and the files reorganized and from that I will see you guys in the next video